All right, all right. So we are going to be looking at creating uh, basically like a nameplate. And I can toss that up on camera really quick where you can have a see-through nameplate that uh, is detachable if you hold it off. This one's super glued. But the general idea is we're going to be making a nameplate that holds, you know, like a teacher or a professional spot or position. And we're going to do two main things. First off, we're going to make the name appear across the top. That's going to be the person's name. And then we're also going to embed, might be a little hard to see on here, uh, some lettering into the nameplate as well. So let's get started and make this. This should be something that's relatively easy to create. Um, and, you know, we'll build from there. So the first thing, we should drop a couple squares. One square is going to be the angled nameplate. The other one's going to be the base. So for ours, let's make this, um, you know what? Let's make it simple. Let's make it 120 wide. And we're going to shrink it down a little bit. Uh, let's make it about 10 tall. So we have kind of like a nice base that it can sit on, and we can build it from there. We're going to ignore that for a little bit, and we're going to focus on the actual plate that's going to be shown. I'm going to make this 4 millimeters tall, and then the width we should make it, oops, sorry, not 100, 120 wide. So they basically match up to each other in terms of width, right? The width of it, or the length of it, sorry, that's the word I'm looking for, is about the same, or in this case, it is exactly the same width. So we're just going to look on the other side, and yeah, it matches up perfectly. That way, when we design the recessed uh, kind of like dip for it to sit in, it'll extend all the way to the end of our stuff. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right. If you wanted to get fancy, uh, you could start cutting out like curls or curves on the side of this. Um, <clears throat> it can be done in a relatively easy way. Um, I can show that really quick. So what I'm going to do is I am going to line up a circle or a cylinder onto here All right. there we go we can make it subtractive and it's going to be a neat little trick that we do with this i'm going to fuse that and really all that i care about is this little tiny corner set up at the top so i'm going to copy it and clone it so we have it there uh, and then actually i'm going to defuse this because i don't really care about anything else on that nameplate. We're going to erase part of this as well. And this may not be the most efficient way to do it, but it's the way that I uh, I prefer to create this because it was kind of like a discovery aspect for me. And uh, I think that's just a pretty neat application of this. So we're going to erase everything except for that little tiny corner. There we go. Use all that together. We're just left with this guy right here. All right. Now, here's where the magic comes in. We take that little snippet, we make it subtractive, and then we introduce it onto our nameplate up here. I'm also going to copy it, and I'm going to move it over to this side. And let's go over there and take a look at it. And I also need to make sure that I rotate this 180 degrees. No, wait, no, I don't need to do it 180, sorry. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert it, so I'm going to make this negative 9.98, and it's going to flip it on that side. Um, I could have done a 180 rotation like that. That's where my brain was, uh, but it clearly isn't there right now. And we're going to shrink this, or sorry, move it uh, so it's attached here. All right, you can adjust the length of these, too, if you wanted to make it a little bit more curved looking. Uh, you know, whatever you want to do for it. I'm just going to kind of leave it as it is, and I'm going to click Fuse. And there we go. We have nice rounded edges. It just looks a little bit neater. It's optional, but it looks pretty nice. All right, next up, we need to put in our text. So I'm going to remove the word text. I'm going to use my name for this because that's who I am. And we're going to shrink this text down so it can fit onto here. Now, I want to make sure I have enough space towards the bottom. Um, 
because I wanted to be able to insert into this um, base plate or this receiving square down at the bottom. All right. I'm going to also inch it or inch the block up just a little bit. That looks pretty good. If I wanted to spend a lot more time trying to center it, I could. I'm pretty okay with the way it is right now. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. Uh, if you want to take the time to center it, obviously that's a engineering solution that you want to try to figure out. I'm going to click to make the text a hole, and I'm going to fuse it. All right. So we have the first piece, right? Mm, not just yet. We have one little thing that we need to address. Do you see in the letter E and the letter D, there are like floating pieces of plastic? So if I were to lift this up, that circle down at the E and that circle or the oval at the D will be left. So we need to make a little bit of a bridge to kind of hold it in place. So I'm going to just grab a box. I'm going to shrink it down so it is one millimeter wide. Shrink it down so it's two millimeters tall. And also let's shrink this down just a little bit more because we don't need that much plastic. Uh, it doesn't matter because it's going to fuse, but we do want to make sure that uh, we're not overreaching on it. I'm going to copy it because we need one for also on here. And essentially, all that we're doing is creating a little mini bridge that connects it so that that letter D will have that floating piece. And the letter E, I can actually shrink it probably a little more. Letter E will also have a bridge right there. Now, it's a little bit shorter. So at an angle or anything else like that, it's going to be hardly visible. People can figure out what the letter is. Now, if I want to perfectly center it, well, I try to nudge it over too far. That's too far to the left. I'm going to change my snap grid down to 0.25, and that way I can just nudge it over a little bit as I need. I'm going to bring it back to 1, though, because um, it can let you become a little too sensitive on the mouse movements. Let's fuse those all together, and boom, we have our first piece. All right, you have your name attached to it. It's punched out. It looks cool. Anything that has floating pieces, you want to make sure that they are covered by a gap. And yeah. All right, now, here's where the tricky part comes in. Um, we want to make it so that it can insert into, like, a slot. And I want to be fancy. If you notice on this one, uh, this is at an angle. So we're going to do that, too. All right. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to figure out the width of this piece. Uh, and it is four. So I'm going to copy this. So we have two of them. I'll drag one away for safekeeping. But the other one, we're going to actually make it a little bit thicker. I'm going to make this 4.1 millimeters tall. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to make the gap that it slides into. You can see where the blue inserts into the yellow. You want to make that just a little bit larger, so if there's any imperfections or any pieces that really aren't making it work, uh, you know, we have a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, these prints sometimes tend to swell up or swell down. You know, they're not perfect, but they're pretty darn close, uh, especially on the Ender 3 3D printers. They're pretty darn good. But here's the trick we're going to do. We're going to make this a hole so it is subtractive. Then I'm going to just face it upright just so it's at a reference point for us to stand up. And I'm going to place it into the box. Raise it a little bit. And then we need to also make it so it is perfectly aligned into that square receiving piece. All right, looking around. This might be a little choppy because I can see the CPU usage is skyrocketing right now. Uh, but we can see that it is fitting perfectly edge to edge on our piece. Then we're going to rotate it to however we want it to be, like whatever angle we think is best. I'm just going to do a little bit. I'm going to do how about a 10 degree angle. That looks pretty nice. And then I'm going to push it back just a little bit. All right. The way that we're seeing it, it looks like the lettering will fit perfectly. We'll have a little bit of wiggle room gap. And because it's just a little bit wider, it will work out perfectly for our nameplate. All right. I'm going to highlight it all and fuse it so it snaps together into one piece. You'll notice that the nameplate 
uh, will gain that rectangular kind of inset once it's finished processing. All right. Uh, looks like we had a little bit of an error. Might have been a little too complicated. So let's try it one more time and then see if we can go on to a solution. All right. It looks like it is fused. Just didn't register. Sometimes that happens with Tinkercad, uh, but I'm also running a uh, video editing program or video recording program at the same time, so this might be a little shaky on that process. So let's hope that this does it. All right, I'm gonna wait a few seconds for it to fuse. Hopefully it does. Nope, nodes fail to road. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's not fun. Let's raise this up one. Oh. Let's defuse it again. Let's see what the issue might have been. I'm just going to adjust the position and see if it works. There we go. For some reason, it was complicated on that one little tiny uh, piece. Sometimes Tinkercad messes up, so this is, uh, you know, it's to be understood or expected. All right, I'm going to change this coloring to yellow and this one to blue because those are my school colors. And the last thing that I want to do is write the name of wherever the organization or the group or the business or whatever you want to be attached onto here. So I'm gonna put a little plug for my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm gonna face this up forward. Uh, please subscribe. And we're gonna shrink this text down quite a considerable amount. All right, I'm gonna raise it up a little bit so it's a little bit above the ground and we're going to Press it in. Still needs to shrink down a little bit. That's okay. There we go. And let me raise it up just by one little tiny bit more. Okay. Uh, nope, not good because it's still poking up a little bit. We'll right lower it back down. This is fine for our example. All right, now I could make it so the text sticks out, but I'm going to make it a hole instead. And... I'm going to bring it up so it's just aligned to it. And then I'm going to put it in no more than two millimeters. So I'm going to go in one, and then I'm going to change it to a half, and I'm going to put it in there. So it's 1.5 millimeters in. The reason being is we don't want to create too high of a uh, like an overhang, because then if the plastic droops, it's not going to look like a good example of it. All right. So we have it inscribed into here. Uh, and when you print these two items, usually with uh, separate color uh, plastics, you know, it'll be a nice contrast, and it should fit in just perfectly into that slot. So if you get an issue with, uh, you know, it being too deep in or anything like that, for some reason I had that weird issue. Um, it's actually the first time I've had it. So, you know, try this out. If you get some errors, just try adjusting things a little bit, or just give the program a few minutes, or just try moving it just a tiny bit and see if you can adjust it from there. Uh, but aside from that, this seems like it has everything pieced together for our nameplate. And when you print these, it's going to come out something like this. It's going to have your name cut out of it. Uh, this makes a great gift, a great little thing for coworkers, for friends, for family, whatever you want to do. And they come out great. They come out lovely. I do recommend printing with a brim, uh, which is where it builds like a flat kind of like, uh, like a top hat layer, you know, where the top hat comes down and then there's the flat sides on it. You want to make sure you print it with that, because otherwise it might warp a little bit, uh, but that's a whole separate issue to tackle on there. So I hope this was insightful. I hope this, uh, hope this was something that you enjoyed watching, and I hope it teaches you how to make uh, just a cute little nameplate for whoever you want and for whatever they do. So if you have any questions, don't be afraid to drop them into the comments. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you're enjoying these videos and if you want to see more of them. And if you need any help, I'm always trying to help whenever I have an opportunity in the comments section. So. Hopefully you all have a wonderful day, and thank you for watching.